Hey, how are you? Very well. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Let's go ahead and go through intros real quick so that way everyone can get to know you. My name is Aaron Hunter. I'm a senior technical trainer with AWS Training Certification. Today, I'm joined with my good friend and co-host, Steve. Hey, I'm Steve, developer advocate for .NET and PowerShell at AWS. And who do we have from CleanRoom? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to kick this off. Uh, hi, this is Sailesh Mahapatra. I'm uh, a product manager on the AWS CleanRoom team. And I'm Shaila Mathias, business development for AWS CleanRooms. I'm based out of Denver, Colorado. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working on this service for over a year throughout our beta. So really thrilled that we are generally available for AWS customers. Yeah, you went generally available earlier this week. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, a couple of days ago. Congratulations. There's been a lot of buzz about this ever since you had previews and everything. And I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of people really excited about clean rooms. Can you tell us more about what it is and how it helps customers? Yeah, sure. Uh, <clears throat> let me take a crack at that. Um, so we define clean rooms as a secure collaboration environment where uh, companies and their partners can perform um, privacy-centric analysis on collective data sets. Uh, so this is very important today because in this changing uh, climate where we are seeing a greater emphasis on uh, user privacy, uh, customers want to collaborate with their partners without revealing their underlying data. One thing I heard that kind of stands out to me is user privacy. I know it's a really big concern for a lot of people. So the ability to implement and also execute on that while maintaining user privacy seems like it's a pretty big thing that Clean Rooms is solving for our customers. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we see this need so to collaborate with partners without revealing the underlying data across industries. So whether it be financial services, travel, healthcare, or advertising. Um, and specific to advertising, brands and media publishers, for example, need to collaborate on collective data to improve things like planning or audience targeting and measurement to make marketing campaigns more effective. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned some of these cases there. Can you, can you go through like a, a typical use case of how this collaboration might work, uh, especially like before we had clean room? I mean, what would have been limited? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, some media publishers today have walled garden clean rooms. So what that means is it actually requires a brand who advertises with that, that media publisher to copy or upload data directly into that environment in order for the brand to understand how effective their media was at, at driving sales, for example. Um, and we are making that easier, so allowing all collaborators, so in this case, the media publisher and the brand, keep your data in your own respective AWS environment and create these clean rooms, determine the, the parameters for which you want to collaborate, and then you're really off to the races. I know permissions can um, sometimes overly complicate some things, but it doesn't seem like this is doing that. You're actually removing some barriers and making the entry to, or the barrier to entry even lower uh, while still at the same time maintaining privacy for the data. Um, is that a really good way to phrase that, I would say? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, what I would say is like, we are providing this environment for uh, developers to have their data sets in their S3 bucket, uh, not move it, not copy it, but have it be usable in collective analysis. Uh, and all of this can be done without, you know, employing an extensive set of engineering resources to mash these data sets together and get insights uh, while maintaining privacy. Now, like how you say mash them all together, like we're making some mashed potatoes. <laughs> um, but also going back to the actual topic of data, especially data that resides within Amazon S3, that's a, a very common use case for maybe creating or having a larger multi-enterprise data lake scenario. So do I have to create like clean rooms all over the place and brand new S3 buckets and migrate data? It doesn't sound like I do. Um, I'm happy to take that. Um, so we see a lot of customers already having their data in S3 mm -hmm. in some shape or form. And uh, it naturally lends itself very well to being used in our AWS clean rooms. Um, so we think that this is going to be Im imminently usable for the customer. And I'm happy to kind of go into a demo later to show you how easy it will be. Uh, yeah, and 
I mean, one advantage of AWS Cleanrooms is that we're really meeting our customers where they are on the AWS cloud. So with a few clicks, customers can easily collaborate with any of the hundreds and thousands of customers that are already using AWS without needing to maintain a copy of their data outside of their AWS environment or load it into another platform. So I can take existing data and use clean rooms to be able to scale my needs even further, essentially. Absolutely. And, and I heard the word demo. Steve, did you hear I, demo? I heard the word demo. I, I'm like, ooh, demo. <laughs> yeah, I know. My ears peaked up. Are you ready? Okay, let's go ahead and yes. jump into this demo that you talked about and promised us. I am so excited for, to, to see it in action. Um, yeah. And we'll go ahead and also flip you up here. Yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Uh, but before we do that, Shaila, do you want to provide a bit of context on the use case we are modeling? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so for context, um, we'll walk through an advertising and marketing use case. So let's say a brand marketer at an airline um, wants to know which of their ad creatives that ran on a social networks platform led to the most ticket sales. Okay. Um, the social network wants to provide that insights back to the airline so that they can then determine which tactics are driving the most sales so they can invest more there. Um, and neither the airline or the social network want to directly share what can be terabytes of data from where it already resides within AWS, given the time it'll take or the risk in data exposure. So that kind of sets the stage for what Silas will walk through. I like this building a nice story for us to follow here. Yeah, <laughs> I'd imagine though that it's also it's it's also not just the data, right? It's also the schemas, right? I don't want to share my schema yeah. with anyone, right? It, it, it is precisely that, and I'll show you in a bit how that's that's done, Steve. Um, so let me like quickly just show you um, how quickly you can get started with AWS Clean Rooms and get started with a collaboration. So let me know if you can see my purple framed Firefox window. Um, if you can, then I represent the airline. Uh, and I'm trying to set up this collaboration, invite my social media publisher partner and start partying. So um, we have the demo collab that I'm creating. I have my name here. This is my account number. Here is my partner, the social media firm and their account number. Uh, we can invite up to four other uh, partners or collaborators into the clean room other than yourself. Next, I specify, hey, I'm the airline. I want to run the conversion queries and see what the metrics are like. And I also decide to turn on query logging, which is a feature that records every query that is run uh, on the data that you have shared in the collaboration. Uh, I, it's optional. I turn it on for my collaboration. And with that, uh, skipping a few steps, I'm now ready to uh, be in a collaboration and a membership will now get sent out to my partners. So once I decide to store my logs in CloudWatch and I say, let's go for it, what do we have here? Uh, if we go to our provider, uh, if we go to our uh, social media publisher stream, uh, we see, hey, there should be a new membership arrive here soon. So does this does this send a notification to those partners that the, the collaboration? Yeah, I was going to ask that as well, like up? based on just the account ID that I put in there. There we go. Um, so now if I press refresh here, here we are. We see a new invitation just popped up, inviting me to this member. I am now officially a member of this collaboration as the social firm. Okay. So that's uh, how quickly you can get started in AWS Green Rooms in a collaboration. That's and cool. So you add the account ID that you want to uh, add as a member, and then they get the notification in their account, and they have to accept it. So it's almost like a handshake. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, it's also worth calling out the cryptographic computing feature that, that Silas mm -hmm. had on his screen. Um, so that's optional, but it does allow collaborators to pre-encrypt data client side and run queries on the encrypted data um, with the only parties with the decryption key as those collaborators, not AWS. So we see this, mm -hmm. um, this optional privacy tech of interest to, to more uh, regulated industries or customer sets. And where's that key stored? Sorry, can you repeat that question, Steve? I didn't so you said that. the client-side encryption uh, and only the people who have that key can access it. Is that key stored somewhere, let's say, in like KMS where they can decrypt using that key or? 
So a popular way we refer to this is like customers encrypt their data prior to bringing it to the clean room and mm-hmm. then throw away the key. Um, okay. The system is configured in a way that it can run analysis on fully encrypted data while it is encrypted in the clean room. So that's what our uh, our, our feature uh, does here. It's quite exciting. That's really helpful, especially for increasing security because you're taking this key and then you're throwing it completely away. But still, clean room has the ability to work with that data uh, and the the different parties that are involved. Let's say you add an account. Uh, I add Steve's account and I want to share my data with Steve. He has access to that same set of data using clean room. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it sounds like Steve and I have a new project this weekend. I, I think we do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's also worth calling out that you can see who's invited to the collaboration before accepting. So all collaborators know who's participating before they accept. It's not possible to invite more collaborators to a collaboration after that initial initiation. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So this is a, a, so if so if another partner came along, we'd have to set up a new collaboration. Okay. Yep. yep. All right. So that sounds um, like it's pretty. It seems like it's pretty easy to set it up. Now, what about some like other capabilities or enhancement capabilities? Is there anything that we can add on top of this? Because Steve and I, it doesn't seem like it'll take us too long to get that thing started, but I want I want to really spice it up a bit. <laughs> yeah, you you beat me to it. Um, uh, <laughs> happy to get into the next stage where we are actually going to show you how customers can constrain. Uh, once you have your data in your S3 bucket and catalog to a glue catalog, all you do is share that catalog to the AWS clean room. Um, and then you are ready to configure a new table. Now a configured table is this resource that allows customers to define very granular rules on how the schema will get used in queries written in the collaboration. So uh, this is, for example, I'm, I'm the social media publisher. I have this cool data that consists of clicks, of behavior segments, of impressions. And this is the data that I want to kind of bring to the collaboration so that my advertiser airline partner can run some queries along with their purchase data. So I want to do, add some real strict constraints on how my queries are, uh, on how my data will be used. So let me show you what kind of um, analysis rules can customers set on uh, their glue data catalog, right? Um, the first thing that customers do is basically decide do I want to support an aggregation style analysis to happen on my data set or do I want to support a list style analysis on my data set? If I choose an aggregate style analysis, I can get uh, my select statement to have things like a count or a count distinct, sum or an average, uh, and basically a, a output measurement statistics from this whole uh, uh, SQL query. If I take a list analysis rule, I can get row level output um, set of uh, uh, email IDs that I want to activate on and other such use cases that I want to kind of em- 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 enable in my collaboration. Um, for now, let me select an aggregation uh, analysis type that could enable this conversion type uh, use case that Shaila mentioned a while back. The next thing I'm going to do is just choose the guided flow on the console to just do this demo. It makes for a much better visual experience, but honestly, you can do everything um, with API calls and in fact, feed this entire JSON rule as a uh, feed this entire analysis rule as a JSON object. So, so with this, let's get into some of the meat of the analysis rules and what kind of controls you are setting. Uh, but I'm happy to pause for, uh, for any reactions, questions. That so I just wanted really to clarify good. before we go go further, this is not moving data, right? This is basically setting up the controls for from the collaboration to be able to see into my data, the data that I specifically choose to share. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So am I like designating, let's say I'm I'm collaborating with Steve on some data and I'm designating Steve as a person, a collaborator to be able to access my data and run some kind of an analysis on it, right? Um, uh, is there a limitation but, uh, to the number of collaborators that I can have? Yeah, we start with a limitation of five collaborators in a clean room collaboration. This means that 
uh, you, a partner, and three other collaborators that could be supplying data. In fact, I'll show you a scenario where we could have like maybe a third party data provider who provides like store level information that you want to bring into the analysis. So uh, that's a scenario we'll, uh, we'll actually model in the demo too. So we okay. we'll look forward mm-hmm. to that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me now get into the meat of like defining this analysis rule. So what we are basically going to do is tell the system how our SQL query should be structured. So I'm going to start from the top and state that uh, queries written on my data can only involve a count of these kind of columns, like a device ID or a hashed email, maybe a count distinct of something similar. And maybe I just want to enable a sum of clicks. So now these columns cannot be used in any other way. They are locked up. Um, I move on and I then go to my join statement. And there I define, uh, yes, I need to enforce a join to happen with my collaborator. And I also specify that we can use these join IDs, uh, these join keys, like a device ID or a hash email to collaborate with my partner and and identify who our common uh, users are in order to perform this analysis. Uh, Next, I decide what parts of my schema can be used as um, in my where statements, in my group by statements, just to slice, dice the data, filter it, Mm -hmm. uh, and see better segments and that whole analysis breadth kind of come through. And finally, I just define what scalar functions might be used. We support a list. You can customize it. Uh, Let's go with something that we recommend already. And then finally, we come to this important step, which is um, a query result control. Uh, This result control basically says for every row of aggregate output that a customer derives from this analysis, it will need to have at least a unique number of a certain field. So for example, I could enforce that, um, please do not return any results to my uh, query runner unless they have at least 100 users present in every row of that result. Um, So that helps um, ensure that your analysis output is not highly sensitive to very small sets of users Mm -hmm. that come through after your classification or your uh, grouping, right? Um, So with this, we are actually done. Uh, We have defined the analysis rule and we have all of our rules set up. If I go ahead and I configure this analysis rule, and associate it to the collaboration, we are now ready to collaborate on my data set. So you've now set up the fields that the partners can query against and what those queries can do effectively. Precisely. Okay. And there's actually a question in the chat. Let me pull it up real quick. Um, they're asking, can I use this to retrieve files from FTP partners? FTP not- so today we, like we said, we support uh, input data being in an S3 bucket. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the mode that we support today. I'm happy to kind of take this uh, request further and see how maybe we can enable that for a particular use case. But as long as you can find this data, make its way to an S3 bucket, I think it will be uh, ready for use within the clean room. So as of right now, the short answer is not as of today, but to maybe submit a feature request so we can consider it in the future. Yep. That's I want cool. to go back I a little how... bit as well. Um, sorry, to, to earlier in the demo, you, you, you mentioned Glue. So there's a requirement on this as well that you need to have a Glue set up onto that S3 data. Um, so you can use a bunch of different catalog options. Okay. One of the ones that we support is the Glue catalog. Okay. And uh, the Glue catalog provides a really easy way to just manually input a catalog, automatically crawl one and create a catalog for you. So that's what we cycle support. Okay. Perfect. All right. Shailas. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. I was also going to call out, you know, the steps that Silas has taken to configure this table. Um, it can be applied to multiple collaborations, saving time on setup and allowing for those insights from multiple partners all within the privacy guardrail set by each data owner. That's nice. That's pretty neat to be able to like duplicate settings. So that way mm-hmm. I'm not redoing something all over again. Um, I'm all about copy pasta. Mm, pasta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so it seems like it's pretty nice to be able to have some analysis. Some it's pretty easy to to launch and deploy and get started with clean rooms. Again, like I mentioned, Steve and I might play around with it this weekend. But um, what's the the overall ease of like let's say configuring the table? Silas kind of walk, walked us through that. Um, so let's say if we have our data in place in Amazon S3 and we want to catalog that and associate it across different collaborators, um, is there anything else that we should be aware of? Um, I think the, uh, we are mostly done with all of the controls that the customer needs to kind of get through. The only thing that uh, would be interesting to view right now is uh, just seeing this all play, play in action, right? So mm. customers write a query. It's pretty much uh, flexible as to what kind of queries customers write as long as they adhere to some of these rules. These rules, in fact, will be automatically enforced by AWS Clean Rooms, and the results will only be outputted if uh, the query matches the template that each of the providers, data providers, uh, enforced on their data set. So let me kind of show you this in action. The screen that you're showing now, then, this would be from the perspective of a partner working on that collaborative data, right? So Correct. they're so the like ones entering this query. Uh, so I'm back to my airline screen. I'm okay. the airline. I want to figure out these conversion metrics. Mm -hmm. um, you remember we walked through a few steps where uh, uh, back where the data uh, where the um, publisher, the social media firm, uploaded uh, their analysis rule yep. and made sure that all of that tied up. So assuming all collaborators have done the same thing for their own data set, and they have all done their job. So like I have put my purchases data. This has uh, some of my purchase information, total sales, mm -hmm. again, a hash device ID and a hash email. Uh, there is an impressions table that we had uh, talked about previously from the social publisher. And then we have this third party, which is the offline data store uh, that I managed to get in as a collaborator on this collaboration. So we have all of them here, done their job. We're ready to write queries. So let yeah. me like show you, um, you know, a very simple query that should not work. Right. So first thing I'll do is me as an airline, uh, I want to get all the emails and their clicks uh, that uh, the social media publisher has uh, shared in their data set. Now, this is this means that I'm effectively going to get uh, the social uh, the social media publishers uh, click list. Right. And I, when I try to run this kind of a query, I immediately see not only is the hashed email not supported directly because we enforce an aggregation constraint on it. But when I even try to run an allowed uh, aggr uh, aggregate statistic, which is a sum of clicks, it says, no, you cannot do this. You need an inner join to figure out common customers. So okay. the only way I can work this is by writing uh, a query like this, for example, which joins with the imp my table with the impressions table and only uses uh, columns as they are supposed to do so. So when I do something like this, which takes a segment as a, as a group by clause, and then uh, some of uh, impressions as, a, as a, some of clicks as total clicks, you can get nice looking data that, that starts to resemble uh, what a customer would need in a real use case uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Wow. That sounds like it's uh, pretty powerful to be able to automatically enforce some kind of privacy at the same time while still sharing the data sets and using clean rooms is this mm -hmm. like, dare I say, almost like a central area for management and access control. Um, that that simplifies the entire process. I, Steve, I love this. I, it's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I, yeah. I, my, my mind's running over like, how does it work? But... <laughs> I want to I want to dig into the like internal details, but I know that's dangerous for me to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, thank you both. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to call out one more thing. I mean, there is a level of arbitrary SQL that is permitted in this case by the airline, um, so the airline running the queries can see who bought a ticket and then who was exposed, um, who bought a ticket, who was exposed, and who actually clicked who bought a ticket, who was exposed, who actually clicked, and who lives in Colorado. Um, so just that level of like flexible analysis um, still within the guardrail set by each data owner, I think is is pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah is. This is this is cool. So uh, before we uh, before we leave, um, as we're getting close to time, um, 
if anybody wants to learn more about this, where should they go? I mean, it was pretty easy to set this collaboration up. I think even Aaron and myself could do this this afternoon, um, you know, if we, if we put our minds to it. But where should they go? What, what resources are out there to help? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for uh, teeing that up. So shameless plug, you can try AWS Cleaners today by logging on um, and navigate uh, via the AWS Management Console. So you guys can uh, create your collaboration and start collaborating tonight over some pasta. Um, you can also learn more about the services at our website. So aws.amazon.com backslash clean dash rooms. Um, and so in addition to features, FAQs, customers, there's also a section where you can sign up to talk to an expert. So we encourage you to fill that out so our team can, can connect in person. That's nice. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Really do appreciate it. And wonderful demo. Keep it up. Yeah. And hey, everyone, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thank you for, from our clean rooms friends. We'll be uh, seeing you in the future. Absolutely. <laughs>